You deserve all the glory We'll lift your name in this house this morning You alone, you alone, not God You alone, you alone, not King And you deserve all the glory Deserve all the honor and all the praise You alone, be declared, you alone You deserve the glory and all of the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and all of the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you in the heavens in the air, Lord. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles. So great, no one else like you, Jesus. Nobody else, there is no one else like you. Let's declare to him for you were great, you were great. You deserve the glory and love of the honor. Lord will lift our hands lift our hands in worship as we bless the holy name. You deserve the glory, Jesus, and all of the honor.
Jehovah is your name. Oh yes, Lord. Jehovah is your name.
of our days. Hallelujah. Awesome God. How great thou art. You alone, Lord. Mighty your miracles we stand in all, in all, in all, my God. Of your holy name, Lord, we bow and we worship you. He's the awesome God, awesome God, great and mighty God. Almighty God, even as we have come to study at your feet again today, we ask, O oh Lord, that the entrance of your word give light and understanding to the simple. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I want you to turn with me, turn your Bible to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6. 2 Kings, chapter 6. I'm continuing today with the message series, The Limit Breaker. Second Kings chapter 6, the message series, The Limit Breaker. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 1, the Bible says, And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to Jordan and let every man take a beam for, from there. And let us make there a place where we shall dwell. So he answered, Go. Then one said, Please consent to go with us, to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. Verse 4 says, So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the Iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him. And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron float. Therefore he said, Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. Praise God. I'm continuing with the series, The Limit Breaker. This morning, my emphasis is the place of determination. The place of determination. Limit, as we all know, is something that hinders us. Something that restricts us. A barrier that constrains us within a particular place. 
a limit is, can be likened to, to a, a, a speed breaker on the way that limits a car from maximizing its potential. No matter the type of car, no matter the model, at a speed bump, every car is made to slow down. So a limit is something in life that slows you down, that stops you from maximizing your potentials in life. A limit makes you to stay in one place moving around the cycle. And so this morning, as we know, as Christians, there are limits that we encounter on our daily basis. There are limits that we came up, we grew up seeing. Limits could be physical. As we know, in the book of Acts chapter 3, the man at the, at the, uh, at the beautiful gate, the Bible said that this man stayed there begging for arms. This man was limited physically, was challenged physically. Acts 3 verse 2. The man at the beautiful gate was challenged physically. He could see the temple, but he couldn't enter the temple. And his situation constrained him in one place, sitting and begging for arms. So this man who was fully born to maximize his potential ended up being a beggar at the beautiful gate. He was challenged physically. The man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, the same thing, he was limited physically, he was limited by his environment. This man could not go beyond what he could see, he could not go beyond the environment he found himself. Also, the limitation could be spiritual. Spiritual limitation, the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 9.20. This woman, health for health reasons, he was limited. He was limited because of health. The madman of Gadara in Mark chapter 5 verse 1. Mark chapter 5 verse 1. The madman of Gadara was limited also by the legion of angels. This is spiritual restriction, spiritual limitations. And so, it is called limitation because it, that was not the original intention for you. That was not God's original intention for you. And so whenever you encounter a limitation as a child of God, whether physical limitation, whether spiritual limitation, know that that was not the original or plan of God concerning you from creation. The Bible told us in Genesis chapter 128, Genesis chapter 128, and it said, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air. And he says, And over every living thing that moved upon the earth. What this tells me is that the original plan of God for his creation is a plan of productivity. He said, Be fruitful. Is a plan, a, a plan of abundance. He said, multiply. Is a plan of fulfilling destiny. He said, replenish. And above all, it is a plan to subdue and to rule over all things. He said, subdue and have dominion. And so God's original intention for you is for you to be fruitful. Is for you to multiply. And is for you to take dominion, to take charge, to rule over all things. And so, any time that you are not maximizing this potential, what that tells you is that there is a limitation somewhere. There is a limitation. That limitation, it could be the background you were born into. It could be the people around you. It could be your boss in the office. It could be the system of the government. It could be your actions or inactions. But one thing that is certain is that you can't make progress because something is restricting you. Limitation. And so, whether the limitation in whichever form the limitation comes, one thing that is certain is that there are steps to breaking out of limitation. There are steps, baby steps that, you, is, that are expected of you as a child of God to take to break out of limitation. And one of those steps is one acknowledging the presence of the limitation. Acknowledging that there is something stopping me from making progress. There's something restricting me from making progress. Acknowledging that I am not where I'm supposed to be as a child of God. Whether in your career, whether in your spiritual life. Acknowledging that this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to have moved beyond this. I'm supposed to have moved beyond this level. And so in our today's text in 2 Kings 6.1, the sons of the prophets... 
They say, it says in verse 1, he said, the sons of the prophet said to Elijah, see now, see now. Now, the sons of the prophet have been living in this place. That was not the first time, that was not the first year they started living in this place, but they have been managing there. They have been tolerating that. They have been squatting with each other. It took one day for somebody to say, see now. That is realization. That is acknowledgement of the fact. See now that the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. This place is too small for us. This place is limiting us from maximizing our potentials. So the sons of the prophet realized in one day that their dwelling place was no longer comfortable for the number of people. What this tells me is that the sons of the prophet realized that that thing that they used to say it is normal is no longer normal. That is acknowledgement of the fact. There are a lot of things in life that we have come to call normal. We have come to say that, oh, the way, um, this place I'm staying, that is God's wish concerning me. The job I'm doing, that's God's wish concerning me. My family, life, that's God's wish concerning me. Now, it takes one day and an encounter for you to realize that that was not the God's original plan for you. And the sons of the prophet say, see now that the place where we dwell is too small for us. It is too small for us. The place where I, you are living in a place, you are believing God for a car, but there's no parking space. See now that this place, this place is not normal for you. You are believing God for something, but every all the indices around show that there's no readiness. See now that it's time to take action. See now we have grown out of this space. And I want to challenge someone. As we walk through this series, the limit breaker, know that there is a place of determination. There's a place where you will get to, to say, see now, I have grown, outgrown this space. I've outgrown this character. I've outgrown this behavior. I've outgrown this job. See now. So realizing that there is a limitation, first and foremost, is the first step towards attaining a breakthrough. There are lots of things that you have outgrown in life, but still managing. And I want to challenge you this evening that you take action today. You'll be determined. Determined to challenge the normal. Determined to challenge the current situation. Determined to challenge what you have come to accept to be normal in your life, to be normal in your marriage, to be normal in your business, to be normal in your career life. The place where you dwell is too small for you. And I pray that someone will come to this realization today in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people manage limitations. They, man they walk around limitations. They try to manage it. They try to tolerate it. But I want to challenge you, child of God, today. I want you to come to the state where you say, see now the state where I am is too small for me. I'm no longer comfortable to stay here. I'm no longer comfortable to be at this level. The Bible says you have been on these mountains for so long. It's time to make a move. Refuse to settle for less, child of God. The place might look comfortable, but refuse to settle for less. His wish towards you is that of good and not of evil. He say you multiply. He say you replenish. He say you take dominion. But where you are today, you are being suppressed. You, are, you don't have that freedom. I want to challenge you today to say, see now where I am is too small for me. Praise God. And so the second step towards realizing a breakthrough, breaking through to, out of any limitation that you have found yourself in life is taking necessary action. Taking necessary action. Confronting the limitation. 
It's one thing to realize that there is a, a situation. It's one thing to, to acknowledge that there is a situation of limitation in your life. It's another thing to step out. To step out, confront the limitation, and be intentional about it. Make necessary move to overcome that limitation. When the sons of the prophet realized that where they were staying was too small for them, they said in verse 2, please let us go to Jordan. As a child of God, you have to come to a state in your life where you say, let me go to Jordan. I don't know what Jordan represents in your life. Jordan could be a change of job. Jordan could be a change of career. Jordan could mean anything. Jordan could mean living where you are now to doing something else. You can't continue to do the same thing over and expect a different result. So it's a time for you to say, please let us go to Jordan. Let me make a move. Let me take a bold step. Challenge yourself. Challenge that situation. The chapter today began by telling us that the sons of the prophet realized that the place was too small. And the next thing is that they made a plan to go and enlarge their territory. They said, please let us go to Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. And let us make there place where we may dwell. And he answered, go. You will be surprised that, you know, those things that when you plan, you say, well, is it possible? If you try, to, if, you, if you take that bold step, what you just hear is go. You might be limited in whichever form, in your career, in your family life, but all it takes is one day take, making that move and what you will hear is go. Break off the limits and be enlarged. You cannot be enlarged remaining in the same place, the same mindset, the same set of people, the same, the same thing you have done over the years and expect that something will change. Where have you been living, child of God? Where have you been living? Where have you restricted yourself? What is the situation that you have managed? What is the situation you have been tolerating in your life? And I challenge you today, to go back and realize that you have outgrown that environment. You have outgrown that behavior. You have outgrown that attitude. You have outgrown that career. You have outgrown those sets of people. You have, it's time to move to Jordan. It's time to change location. It's time to build a new tent. It's time to start a new career. It's time to start a new business. It's time to challenge yourself and do something different. What is it that has been restricting you? And I pray for you today. As you determine to break out today, you shall break forth in the name of Jesus. See now that the place where we, we, we stay is too small for us. Let us go to Jordan and take beam. You have capacity to do those things. But whenever the idea comes to you, the devil sells a story to you, dummy story to you. You can't do it. You don't have the strength to do it. You don't have the money to do it. You don't have the connection to do it. Something will just come to you to discourage you. And I want to challenge you today. That thing that is discouraging you is a limitation in itself trying to keep you in one place. See now that the place where we stay is too small for us. That is determination. That is realization. That is statement of fact for someone who is about to bring a change. And so I challenge you today. From January to now, there are many things you have tried. Or there are many thoughts that have come to your mind. Many businesses you thought you could start. But the only thing you could see are the limitations around. You could see the lockdown. You could see that no economy is not moving. You could see Everything that is bad. But you couldn't see that at a time like this, people are beginning to open new businesses and making more money than they used to do before. What are the opportunities that a situation like COVID have provided? 
Look more in that direction, child of God. Every plan you have had from the beginning of this day, year, you have, you, have, you have just relapsed and waiting that when the situation comes back to normal, why not adapt to the situation? It's time to go to Jordan. It's time to take the beam. It's time to build new career. It's time to come with new ideas. It's time to start new business. It's time to move to places. The place where you dwell is limiting you. Your environment is limiting you. The man at the pool of cedar has come to realize that everybody there is just comfortable with the place. The environment. So the only thing he could see is that when he may, tries to make a move, when the angel comes, that somebody else will take his place. And even when Jesus came to him, he said, do you want to be made whole? And the response was that when, I, when the angel comes, I try to make a move, someone else is occupying it. That was the answer to Jesus' question. But this man has been restricted by his, his environment. This man has allowed his environment to affect his psyche, to affect his mindset about everything in life. And I challenge you this day that you take that bold step to change that limitation in your life in the name of Jesus. Be determined to do something about the limitation. There is always something Something potential that God has given to you to help you survive, to help you overcome that limitation. Blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10 46. Mark 10 46, the Bible told us a story about blind Bartimaeus. This man was limited by sight, but he could still shout. God still gave him the strength to outrun the crowd and gave him the strength to climb, to, to, to shout. At Jesus, say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So this man, even though challenged, even though limited by sight, he could still find something in him that he could use to overcome his limitation, which is his mouth. And he shouted. When they were shutting him down, shut up your mouth, he shouted even the more. I might be limited physically. I might be limited. I might be challenged. But my mouth, I can still shout. So shout if it takes that to survive. If it takes that to break the limit, child of God, shout. Zacchaeus in Luke 19.5. Luke 19.5. The Bible told us the story about Zacchaeus. A man challenged physically by height. But this man realized that even though he was limited by height, he still had the strength to climb. God still gave him the strength, the skills to climb. Because it doesn't take height to climb. And he climbed. And Jesus saw him. He got the attention of the master. So child of God, I challenge you today, take the bull by the horn. Go extra mile. Don't look at the situation. Look at something that God has given you. Every one of us, God has given us something to survive. Something to overcome the limitation. Leverage that at a time like this and God will see you through in Jesus' name. And the final one, realizing the limitation is one. Taking the bold step is the other. But as you go, as you take that bold step, carry God along. Go with God. Go with God. Realize that the limit breaker himself is the Holy Spirit. It's not by your strength that you break a limit. It's not by your wisdom that you break a limit. It's not by the people that you know that you break a limit. It is by the grace of God that you break every limit of your life. If you go with, without God, you will see that there will be a challenge along the line. That you may not be able to overcome. In other words, you are trying to, 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 to come out of a, to break out of a limitation and something else challenges you from reaching your goal. And so the source of the prophet in verse 3, he says, Then one said, Please consent to go with us. The man of God went with them. And in verse 4, he says, So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down the tree. Verse 5 says, But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head 
fell into the water. The iron axe head fell into the water. There will be a time that the iron heads of the axe will fall into the water. In your career, in your business, in your journey of life, the iron axe head will fall into the water. What does an iron axe head represent? The plans that you have. That thing that gave you the confidence to make the move. The money that you have saved over the years. The plan to leave that career to join another career. That's the axe head. There will be a time you will take, make that move and the axe head will fall into the water. That in itself does not mean that you didn't hear from God. That is just an obstacle trying to keep you in one place. You started your business and one month later, pandemic started. And you say, I said it. The money, all the money you saved, you put everything together. Over 20 years of career. And immediately you invested it, recession started. Axe head fell into the water. You had a beautiful plan in the beginning of the year. You took step in February. And by March, pandemic started. Axe head fell into the water. But child of God, I want to tell you that axe head falling into the water is just the beginning. The beginning. Is God is just about to announce your breakthrough. So expect that the axe head will fall into the water when you make a move. But child of God, that should not deter you. There is still something that God has kept for you to overcome that. And what is that? Cry out to God. Cry out to God. There's something God has given to you to overcome that challenge. Cry out to him. When blind Bartimaeus was shouting, they were shutting him down. They didn't know that that is what God, survivor mechanism that God has put in him to overcome his limitation. His loud shout. Cry out to God. As you embark on that journey, as you take that bold step, carry God along. When the axe head falls into the water, cry out to him. Tell him he was the one that sent you on this and he will not leave you or forsake you. And so I challenge you today, child of God, at a time like this, you have a God that cannot be limited. God cannot be limited. And so once you have that realization, you come to that realization, you know that the person with you is more than those with them. The person inside of you, the potential that he has put inside of you is meant to overcome whatever situation of the world or whatever world system that you may encounter. And so in closing this morning, I tell you, child of God, take that bold step. Be determined. There is a place of determination in the time of limitation. There is a place of determination. Realize that there is a problem. Take that bold step. Carry God along. And I assure you, you will be victorious at the end of the day in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, Psalm 24 verse 7. Psalm 24 verse 7, the Bible says, Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up. He said, You everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And I pray for you today. Every gate of limitation in your life. Every gate of limitation in your family. Every gate of limitation in your career. In your marriage. I pray today. Let that gate be lifted up today in the name of Jesus. It shall be lifted up. You shall break forth and come out victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. He said lift up your heads. O ye gates. He said, lift up everlasting doors. Every door that the enemy has used to restrict you in one location. And I pray 
this morning that you will realize that that door exists and realize that there is always a way of escape. God will make a way of escape for you in the name of Jesus. He said, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. God will take glory in that situation in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that you will come out victorious. You will testify of the goodness of God in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hope you have been blessed this evening. I want us to take our offering as we thank God for his word. I want us to take our offering, our account numbers are distributed on the screen and on different WhatsApp portals. So if you are making a transfer, you use the description there, RCCG Lily of the Valley Chapel. Then if you are writing a check, you write description at the back. Offering for tight, you write tight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. As your people have brought offering to your presence, we ask you, Lord, Father, may this offering be a point of contact Lord, for every limitation of life in the name of Jesus. I pray that as they give this offering, Lord, Father, they shall break through and they shall break forth in the mighty name of Jesus. They will move beyond that place that they thought is normal in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for joining this online broadcast. This is Lily of the Valley's Chapel, a Parish of Redeemed Christian Church of God. Uh, because of the lockdown and the pandemic, we have our midweek services on Tuesdays on YouTube and on Thursdays via Zoom. The time is 6 to 6.30 p.m. We also meet mid midweek every Monday, every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. We meet by 7 to 7.20 for prayer session, 20 minutes prayer session. You will see the the uh, link, the Zoom link on the different portals and on the screen. And we pray that you join us in any of those sessions and your life will not remain the same. Let us pray. In closing, Psalm 3, verse 3. Psalm 3, verse 3. The Bible says, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I pray for someone today. Every limitation that has made you to bow your heads in shame, God will lift your heads up again in the name of Jesus. You will stand tall even as your creator has made it to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 4 says, I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. I pray that everything that has made you to cry at midnight, God will hear you. He will visit that limitation. He will give you breakthrough today in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 30 verse 5, the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I pray wherever you have wept, joy has come. Your morning hour is now. I pray for someone whose axe have fallen into the water. I pray that your axe shall float again in the name of Jesus. Every limitation that has come to keep you in one place, I pray today that you break forth and you go forth in victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And we share the grace, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you.